Hello, everyone. Uh, Eid Mubarak. Uh, we hope that you all are doing very great. And today, as, as like before, uh, our session starts at the Meet the uh, Global Leader, episode 29. And today we have a very uh, profound and uh, informative guest and very knowledgeable. Uh, she is going to discuss and share a lot about uh, digital transformation. And we all know that uh, around the world that uh, this, this is going so fast. And after pandemic, we uh, have seen a lot of transformation digitally in different companies. Uh, globally and locally and uh, you know the main objective of this session is to share information knowledge from an expert person so that you know like uh, our audience who are mostly young people young students they can get a glimpse of uh, the topic where our guest is going to discuss and uh, just uh, uh, to welcome our guest uh, Manal how are you? how are you doing hey thank you I'm doing well how are you yeah, I'm doing very great. And thank you so much for, you know, like uh, managing a schedule for, for us. And just to uh, let me introduce for uh, briefly, uh, she's uh, she did her bachelor, master and um, PhD in computer science. And she uh, worked before uh, for Ericsson and also worked as an adjunct faculty. And now she's working as a head of uh, digital transformation, learning and development uh, for Meta. And we have our host, Samira, with us, and she's going to host the whole session. Samira. So, Samira, I don't think we can hear you yet. Thank you, Mahupaya, and hello, everyone, and hello, Ms. Hori. Uh, we're delighted uh, and honored to have such an accomplished person with us. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. I'm excited talking to you all. Thank you. Well, of course, you have felt the urge to transform this journey. Uh, tell our audience, why do you need to? Mm. Um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, it's a it's a good question. Um, so obviously, I think Mahbub also made reference to it. COVID came and kind of forced itself as the transformation leader of what happened in the last couple of years. Um, so, but if we only think about COVID as a massive disruptor, um, we would be missing, you know, some of the bigger picture. So today when we're talking about um, the pandemic and what it did to our lives, um, a lot of us are realizing there's no going back to the pre-COVID days, right? Like we did things uh, in person, um, maybe you you guys had these sessions in person. I don't know, but there there was there was a lot of moments where we defaulted to physical spaces. Um, what the pandemic had opened us for opened up for us is like the thought that we can do a lot more with technology than we thought we could, and the fact that we are now talking about going and supercharging our businesses or supercharging our um, departments. We talk about going 10x. Like why did we do it at 1x when we can do it at 10? So as you think about the need to transform, you need to think about a couple of things. It's like, is your, is your business or work or whatever project you're, you've been working on require you to scale at a two times, three times, 10 times? If you are depending on humans only to do it, it will break. Like it, it, there's no, you know, no one will disagree, I think, that eventually scaling requires introduction of technologies and automation. So as you think about um, growing something, you always want to think about what are the best ways for me to be efficient and I, so I can maintain that level of quality at the same time being efficient, sustainable, uh, robust, so that things don't break in the middle. The other need that came out from um, thinking like why it's important now to digitally transform is that while COVID also disrupted our lives, it made us all um, it made all our experiences equ equitable in a way. Like we all equalized in the way we interact with each other. We all became a square on the screen like we are right now. So it's important for us to, to remember that in some places, um, some experiences were, were happening, but they were not accessible or reachable in other places in the world. We know in some countries, let's say, the internet access is still a thing. Like not everybody is capable of having, you know, sus you know a strong connection or good... Um, internet backbone to support, let's say, a virtual reality experience. Um, the fact that we all had to like all go into like lock arms and be like, we're all going to be on a technology platform to talk to each other. 
made sure that we are all advancing at the same time. So the fact that you are introducing a digital solution means you are going to be able to bring people along with you along the journey. And this is a massive element of being successful. Excellent. What were the skills that you developed by doing those activities? Can you say that again? Uh, what were the skills that mm -hmm. you developed by doing those activities? Oh, OK. Um, so when, when you're thinking about transforming digitally, um, you start figuring out what are the outcomes you're going after, right? Like if, you, if you're trying to um, scale your business or if you're trying to grow uh, a process to make it repeatable, sustainable in a way, in a way that, you know, hums like a machine. Um, then you start thinking through uh, process management. You start thinking like, oh, I need to learn how to build a process and think through all the steps that go into it from initial to completion. Um, and then you start thinking about the people like, OK, I need to have an eye for what we call change management, right? Change management is a skill that's not mastered by many, but it's like becoming a major element of any digital transformation project. Change management means I know who to involve, when to involve them, what they need to know, what should I tell them, what elements that we used to be, you know, um, you know, accurate or correct in the current state are no longer that. And I need to explain why the new state is what we're going for and what does it do for us. A process that used to take five steps in the past now takes two and here's how you do it. So the art and the science of digital transformation is kind of a little bit mixed up and mangled up between understanding the technology landscape, which we think is 90% of digital transformation is technology. Well, yes, it is a massive part, but it's not the only part. And if you're only thinking about, oh, I need to be like a savvy technical person who knows how to implement new tech and integrate it and hook it up into all my ecosystem, then you are missing the point because sometimes you'll build a castle and nobody will come. So if you're if you're not bringing people along with like the skills of change management and strong communication, influence, bringing people like the value prop and explaining like the so what, like we need to do this so we can be faster, better, more efficient. Um, nobody's going to be wanting to come play with you. So th these are like um, the under the hood kind of skills that people need. At the same time, I feel like we spend too much time focused on the hard skills, which is oh, which technology do I need to know? What coding languages should I be fluent in? What kind of data analytics and, you know, um, what kind of dashboard should I build? And it's like sometimes more than that. Does that answer your question or do you want something yeah. else? <laughs> <laughs> And good to know this. And uh, as an expert, what does digital transformation mean to you? Um, I think for me, it's a it's a place of I, I think like alluded earlier, it's a solution to create uh, an accessible um, solution for many and for a lot more people that we had um, thought we could. Like it's a it's a place where we can scale. Um, and offer a repeatable, equitable, similar experience to many. Um, it's also a place for creating more reach and more awareness. So um, when, when you are operating in the space of humans are going to act, act on things, let's say I'll use the learning and development examples, like we used to do a lot of classes, right? Like hard <laughs> classrooms, doors, walls, all of that. And now we moved into like, you know, similar platforms to this one or rooms or virtual reality or, you know, so now the, the, the amount of modalities have in, been introduced gives you all this diversity of choice. So for me, it, it's not it's it's not a matter of like I moved from something manual to something digital. It's also I offered my users a plethora of options where they can feel like if this one doesn't work for me, I have five other options that work for me. If I cannot travel to be in that location with others, I can join them in the metaverse. So there's there's this, um, you know, it's opened us open opened up for us a whole wide array of possibilities that is more than just like now I'm dealing with a robot or now I'm dealing with a tool. So those are like the th that's what excites me about it. Very informative indeed. 
uh, we know uh, digital transformation can be complex. Mm -hmm. Walk us through the idea of simplify the process. Spot on. It is complex. Um, well, I feel sometimes we complexify. Is that a complicated word enough for you? <laughs> Have you heard it before? We use it a lot. We use that word complexifying a lot. Um, and to your point that the, the art of simplification is now becoming a little bit a rare breed. Um, complex does not mean better. I think, you know, I, I want to assume that people agree with me. Um, and then the reason why we compl complexify, I think, is because we lack the understanding sometimes of what needs to be done. So for us to be able to simplify something, it means to understand it intimately. We know exactly what we're going after and why we're doing it. So for us to kind of really be able to simplify it, I think you need to be thinking about it like, what, what, is, what is it we're trying to solve for? If, like, it might sound like, oh, we all know what we're solving for, but if you really write it down, what is that mission that you're going after? What is your vision for it? Like, you want to change a process that you do today manually, turn it to become digital, yes. But what does that look like in three years? What is the, we call it the castle on the hill. Like, what are you building? What's like an aspirational um, plan for your, for your project? Start there. And if it still doesn't inspire you, it means we're not thinking big enough. Now, back to complexity and simplification, you're not going to build that castle today. This is your three-year, four-year, five-year plan. What are the things you can do today so you can achieve your path towards that? What are the breadcrumbs you can start, like, you know, putting around and start going through to be able to say, yeah, I'm headed there. I'm not there yet. We are in month six of year one and we're going to do this. This is the focus. So when, when you start, like, focusing only on what you can do right now, that what gives you the most impact with the capabilities and the resources and, the, you know, what's feasible and what's available, it simplifies things for you, right? Now that you're laser focused on this is today, but this is three years. And and keeping this macro and micro view of things is a huge part of the game because you want to motivate people too, right? You don't just want to simplify it for them and put them in this tunnel view. You're not. You are trying to tell them, here's the North Star. We're going there. But for this half, this is where we're focused. So they are inspired, excited, and they know exactly what to do. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, certainly, uh, there are specific stages in the trans trans transformation journey. Uh, what stage in the transformation journey would you find most businesses today? Um, this is a hard question because obviously I'm not like in all industries and I don't know exactly what everybody's going through. But from from where I sit uh, and hu humbly, I like, you know, I get to see some similar, you know, um, departments and businesses in the learning space, especially, I feel like we all got a wake up call. So it was more of a, oh, you know, insert bleep word here. And then like, we need to do something. This is not like, it's March 5th, everybody's at home and we need to roll something out. So I think for the first couple of years, we were all just like getting by. We were just putting band-aids on stuff, like kick off a session here, try to figure out if you can turn this into a video there. Um, you know, all the things that could be hacked up to just make things work. Um, and that was a great, was a great learning. It was painful, but it was a great first year through the pandemic. What we, what, what I think we are all in right now is like, we kind of settled into this. We set in it, like they say, it's muddy, but we know it like, and like, oh, okay, now we can fix this. It's, it can be better. Like it's working, but it could break at any minute. So, so I feel like now we are all more in that crawl to walk kind of phase where we kind of got our, you know, we got schooled <laughs> by COVID on all things possible. And we got distracted by the shiny objects for a little bit. But I think now we are like, oh, but we know the problems we're trying to solve, what they are. And yeah, I don't need to look at these shiny objects. I need to focus on these two only to, to realize my vision. Um, I think we will we will start seeing us becoming much savvier in um, in improving what the process should be, and having better eye for what could break. Like uh, I think we we started in a place of like a collective naivete that there's a it was gonna it's all gonna be fine. It's gonna be a few weeks, few months. We'll go back. No. And now nobody wants to go back, right? Like nobody wants to go back to their previous life because we grew as humans and we're like. 
there's no going back. I'm a different person now. So we are growing more skills that we didn't have before of like, we can see around corners. We can think more about like the what if we, um, so, so the ability for us to kind of mature into it, I think it's going to be beautiful because now we can think through things in a much thorough way um, and realize quickly like, oh, we need to kind of get this, not just to work for today, we need it to work for like a couple more years down the road. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like we are currently probably in a state of like, we know how to walk, we're not ready to run yet, but running is coming. Okay. Uh, how to avoid uh, falling back into old habits instead of transforming forward? Mm, what a good question. Um, why are we falling backwards? I think that would be the first question I would ask the project team or the lead. Like, if if we think we are falling back, it means whatever we introduced did not hit the mark. There was something that we did not solve for, right? Um, if we, and sometimes, like I said earlier, um, technology is only a piece of the pie. There's the humans, there's the processes. They all have to kind of hum and work together. I cannot just force a technology on, um, on a group of people and expect them to just like adopt it, right? So if the original problem was not steeped in technology and I offered the solution to be a technology, people were not going to buy into it, right? Um, and then off, obviously we like, oh, it's too hard to learn. Let me just do it the way I know how to do it, right? Um, if we're falling back into our ba into the old ways of doing things, uh, it means the new one did not do what it was supposed to do for us. And that means we need to take a pause and go back to the drawing board. Like what problem did we say we were solving and what did the solution give us? Did it really solve for this problem or not? If it didn't solve for the problem, like, and we genuinely thought it was the right thing to invest in, I think we need to go a, a level deeper. Is there a human problem here? Like are people not bought into the solution and there's a reason why? Let's say we did not factor in, well, internet is not gonna be reliable in some parts and this solution is heavily dependent on internet. So people are not really able to use it and they're going back to some hacky way of doing things. So the, the, the need to pause and re like, you know, pivot, as we say, is gonna be an, an important part of the transformation. And transformation is not a straight line. I think it's, you know, as, as you know, a, a human breed, we don't operate like that. We're not linear that way. We're going to have to kind of fall down a few times before we're like, okay, I get it now. And then you think you got it, but then you do it again and you fall sometimes even deeper with, but with mad, massive learning and then you launch it. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think it's sometimes an indicator that, and it's sometimes a good indicator that, Whatever we solved for was not the original problem. So let's go back and make sure that we are addressing it. The, the last thing I'll say on this question, because I love that question, um, is like also sometimes we are not kind of bringing people along. You want people to advocate for what you're building. Even if they're not part of the project itself, if they are going to be your users, bring them along early and often. Let them know like, here's how we're thinking about addressing it. Do you see any flags? So sometimes we put solutions together, all well-intended, but then something breaks in the in the space of like accessibility. Like, oh, have you thought about you know making sure it's accessible? And we're like, oh no, we didn't think of that. Why? Because there was no voices for accessibility on the project team, and this is not inclusive. So when 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 you're trying to kind of really launch something and make sure it's successful, make sure you have the voices of every representation about, like at, at the table with you. So everybody is like marching on, thinking like, yes, I see myself in that solution. It represents me. Wonderful. Well, uh, there might be some crucial roadblocks that mid-sized businesses face th these days. Uh, can you talk about it uh, for our audience, please? Yeah. I mean, yes, we're always going to face roadblocks. That's not going to be um, a surprise, I don't think. What's um, the, the thing that I expect or I've seen, you know, seen it as a meme kind of thing is that a lot of us got stuck in the shiny object drawer. Like, oh, VR is cool. Let's go play in VR. We all want to play in VR all the time now. But does it really solve the problem that we are trying to address? Let's say probably not. Probably that's not the right modality yet. Um, or we see like a really cool technology 
and we expect that cool factor to retrofit into our need. Like, no, we, this is the wrong order of things. What is the problem you're trying to solve? Let's go find a solution to that. Let's not bring a solution and then shop it for a problem. So that's that. This is a major trap. I feel like we can, we sometimes bump against, and it shows up as a roadblock later because we're like, "Ooh, we did not really think this through," or we thought this tool will do for us what we thought, but it lacks fifteen other things. So now we're back to the to the drawing board. This is one of one of them. Um, other things I can think of that could become a roadblock is sometimes we box ourselves, and we don't think big enough. Like we 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 take on just a little bit, but then that little bit, we, we outgrow super quickly. And then we're like, we find ourselves transforming again. Not to say that transformation happens once and, and done, but but there's there's a right sizing that we need to be thinking through. Let's not solve just for tomorrow. What are you gonna do about next year? So the, having a vision and a roadmap, and like, like I said earlier, like you want your breadcrumbs along your milestones, is gonna help you get un, unstuck. We get stuck when we lose sight of the of the vision that we're going after and like the why. Like, why are we doing this again? Did anybody, you know, is everybody still on the same page about this vision? And if the vision is changing or we think we did not, you know, we, we are not anymore solving for that vision, change it. Change it and then change the course correct accordingly. Don't get stuck into like solving for a problem that you don't believe in anymore. Um, and then the last thing I'll say on this one is, the, there's a lot of noise in the market, right? There's a lot of tools, platforms, businesses. The competition is fierce. When I talk to kind of like technology providers, my first question usually is like, what is your sweet spot? Because I think we are now finding that a lot of providers painting the picture of like a generalist, like we can do everything. Yes, smart people everywhere. They can do a lot of things. But what do you want to do? What do you want to be known for? What is it that one thing you do you do uber good that we should work with you and you alone. So I feel like this this challenges a lot of your prioritization too. Like, oh, if we wanna be known for like, we do so, like we are the best people at personalizing experiences. So AI and machine learning, and this is our thing, then do that and do it really well so that you know that this is your P0 at all times. You're not gonna think about anything else and then let other, you know, other providers do what they are best at. And together you create a massively successful experience. So instead of like thinking through, like, I need to solve for 15 things, you're going to get roadblocked because people will, will not be able to, to do all these things. And they're going to be, you know, losing their, their focus. Instead say, this is, this is what we do. This is what we're going to focus on. And this is what we want to be known for. And eventually you'll you'll find your way. But roadblocks are part of the journey. And it's it's like getting over the hump is the fun part about an adventure, right? Right. Very insight, insightful, surely. Uh, which departments uh, inside a business handle transformation the best? Uh, which departments typically uh, pose the biggest challenge? I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is a tough one. Um, I think it's, it's not a matter of like which departments do it better and which one pause a challenge. It's, I think it can be anyone, any department can be a, both a challenge and a propeller forward. I think people who, who do it well or departments or businesses that do it well, they do it with high transparency and there's high trust. That is, we may have like massive disagreements on what should be the priorities or who should do what, but we are able to have these conversations and feel confident that we have each other's back. Like we're, we're trying to, it's us against the problem, but we're not against each other. When, when, you're, when you approach your problems that way, change management becomes smoother and people will get on board with the solutioning and they become part of the solution instead of being part of the problem, like we say. Um, oh. The, the challenge is that the, the situation where to back to your question, like what caused the biggest challenge is like when when people are siloed and they're like, I only do this, like, don't bother me with other things. Like, I just want to focus on this one thing I bring. But we are no longer in these kind of, you know, dynamics today. Today, all solutions need to integrate, right? Like users see us as one. They don't know that there are like 15 sub solutions going on. They see they see one solution. So on the back end, we all need to lock arms, literally and you know, uh, metaphorically, to make to make these solutions happen. 
So I think it's um it's um it's a skill and it's not it's not like a matter of a department versus another. It's more of like our human skills and being transparent and being um, able to like in, create trust, like leadership, right? It's more of a leadership problem than a business problem. Are the leaders talking to each other? Are they creating this safe space for people to come and be like, okay, we have a problem and here's how I think we should do it instead of people waiting for someone to tell them what they should do. One of the reasons for this question is, you know, like uh, it is the questions we're asking, it is based on uh, our country's context. So, you know, some people in some, you know, like uh, some organizations, they think uh, the digitizing processes or digital transformation is going to uh, help or the owners to, you know, cut employees. So mm. they're going to lose jobs. So this is, this is, you know, like some departments, they may, you know, say they may, uh, not comply with the change management, you know, so that just sometimes this kind of conflict arise. So okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, okay. So not that I have a, like the magic bullet for it, but I think the, the, the aspects here would be around if, if my old job is going to go away because you are going to digitize and you're going to replace me with a algorithm that's going to do what I do day to day, it means my skills are no longer relevant, right? It's an indicator that those skills are passe like we need to move on from those as as a human who is stuck in that situation i need to practice an open mindset like i cannot stay in my static fixed mindset that this is what i do and those are my skills then how can i upskill in the new world in that in that new solution that you're bringing to me what skills i need to be acquiring so i am a contributor in that new digital space and the company itself has a role here too. Like we, we, when we talk digital transformation, we're talking upskilling of people. We're not just saying, here's the solution, figure it out. No, it's part of it, right? We need, to, we need to bring them along. And when I say that, I mean, not just know what we're doing. It means we're gonna teach you how to become productive on that new space. And hey, you're gonna need to learn a little bit of data analytics here. And you're gonna need to learn a little bit of coding here. Are you up for it? If you are, you are part of this new world. If not, and this is not your, you know, your jam anymore maybe it's time to talk about a, a shift in career then we talk more career growth and different journey there but the 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 thought of like i'm gonna get cut out from a job is real right like um we cannot just hide behind like no it's not gonna happen it will happen but that means that our need to evolve our skills is becoming now a priority and if we're not doing that well we'll yeah absolutely we're gonna we're gonna have a massive anxiety Cool. The next uh, relevant question must be, you know, like, uh, you know, like one of the uh, a few of the top skills needed to be uh, expert in uh, digital transformation sector is, you know, like big data analytics, uh, machine learning, data and digital security, mobility management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the thing is, you know, uh, like you know, country or some people, you know, like think that uh, this kind of skill to you know like uh acquire this kind of skills we we need to we have to study you know, like computer science or some mm -hmm. kind of you know like uh other like ict uh this uh, we have to study that or, or we have to do, do our uh bachelor or master's on that so yeah. what do you think like say for example my uh, uh my major was i studied in marketing so mm -hmm. if i want to you know like uh, acquire those skills Samira, she is, has been studying in engineering. So, mm -hmm. like similar to that, if we want to acquire these kind of skills, which is necessary to perform in uh, that uh, operation, you know, like uh, digital transformation, mm -hmm. if we want to be part of that journey. So, how we can, you know, like what are the basic uh, knowledge we have to have for that? That's a great question. Um, the the tech sector and like. The, the the way it operates today makes it easier for us to have transferable skills so i don't want to like date myself but i learned programming languages that do not exist today did that serve me is that serving me in my current state of course it is it's it's not it's it's not i need it's not that i needed a one-to-one -one match it's not like i needed to learn this language so i can do this job what the language or the programming class or the machine learning class or the analytics class gonna give you is a new way of thinking and like a new way of problem solving. That's the skill that's gonna stay with you and you're gonna transfer it over whatever job you're in if you continue to shape it and like improve it. 
So for people who say, I want to jump in on digital transformation, but hey, I don't know how to do AI. I don't know big data. I don't know security. I don't, like, it's okay. Um, you need to acquire some of those skills. And the, the world we're in right now offers us a lot of like opportunities to learn without having a college degree. We're, we're, the world is moving away even from that concept, right? Like the rigid four-year program where you get the skills and you can get the job. We learn on the job right now, right? So when people come to us and say, um, machine learning is the new thing, but we are I'm, I'm a generalist software engineer, what should I do? Like take whatever courses you need to take, like go, go to these third-party content providers available globally that can offer you a certification or offer free classes or a master class, like, all these, the, the the concept of an open education is now a thing. Like to be locked in the, um, in the college education is not the place for you to be like, oh, this is where I need to make massive decision. What's gonna be my future? It's not the case anymore. So what what you should focus on in college, I think is learn the hard, the, sorry, learn the soft skills, not the hard skills. Learn how to problem solve, how to think outside the box, how to approach innovation, how to learn how to learn. All, all these things are gonna stay with you much longer than if you focus on something that would become obsolete, right? Like if you say, I'm gonna make my bet that this language is gonna be the one I'm gonna focus on so I can get a great job. It might serve you the first you know, five years of your career, but then soon enough, you're gonna have to learn something new. This is the nature of technology, we from a generation to generation, right? Like it's not gonna, um, it's gonna expire, right? It, it always has an expiry, expiry date on it. So um, I hope that answered the question. Is that? Okay? Yeah, perfect. The oh. thing is, you know, like uh, every year we have a uh, updated version of iPhone and several, you know, like Android. So people every year they buy new phones, you know, that have this upgradation, <laughs> but they don't want to upgrade themselves. <laughs> so yeah, so better um, lose your job. Yeah. So just uh, some idea. Just uh, let's say we have two question. Uh, so let's ask from. Yeah. Did so there's you know, a question. Miss Hori, uh, yeah. can tell us um, how uh, you measure if your digital transformation was successful. I'm sorry. Say that again. Uh, how you measure? if your digital transformation was successful? How do I measure? Got it. Um, okay. Um, so I like we learned very, very like the hard way that if you do not understand what the outcome you're hoping to get out of the project, then you'll never be able to tell if it's successful or not. So even before you start doing the project, you need to write yourself this note and say, if this is successful, what does it look like? So you, you have to kind of propel yourself into the future and go like, okay, if we achieve this project, these are the three things that should have happened. We improved this, we built this, we integrated this, whatever, whatever, whatever those outcomes are, that becomes your measurement guide, right? So then you go, you go back to the past, <laughs> to today, and you'd be like, okay, so for us to say we successfully implemented, we're going to have to show that these three things happened. So... We always we always tell the team you cannot action what you cannot measure like if you're not measuring it how do you know what to do about it like if it if, if you do something great well but did it achieve what was intended to achieve did it hit the mark is it good quality does it solve the problem you cannot do it and then ask those questions you should have your you know your blueprint for your measurement in advance and start there and then you need to have your measurement tracking along with your project as you're as you're doing it like you, you continue to like track your kpis your you know your key metrics you're trying to understand like is it going up is it going down is it consistently down what's going on so the, the data should be like your you know the, the conscience of your project like it should be tracking along with you all the time knowing that that you know exactly what what success looks like for you because you have written it down those are the outcomes we're going after. And this is like part of our contract with ourselves so that when we are finishing this project, we'll call it successful if these three things happened. Do you think, is there anything we are leaving out here that needs to be um, addressed in the co-current world uh, in terms of gender or racial diversity or equality or opportunities or anything you feel important? I think we kind of. I think we hit on all the main things. Uh, I love your your flag about diversity and equity. I think this is a an element that sometimes gets missed. Um, 
we're, we're seeing that as humans, we are transferring our uh, biases into the algorithms that we're writing, right? Especially when it comes to now the sophistication that AI has given us. We're seeing like, you see glimpses of the, the algorithms being biased toward things that also humans are biased towards. And this is an, an, a massive area that needs attention. Um, being a responsible innovator is a massive um, role to play. Um, and being part of the project, so make sure that that is, that is represented so somebody is paying attention. Like I said before, if you don't bring somebody who has an eye for accessibility or somebody who is from an unrepresented population, you will lose that lens. Your, your project will not be inclusive enough to make sure that it's solving for all this. At the same time, it's also dependent on who's your audience. If you're trying to reach a, mar a large number of people, um, it's a global solution. Pay attention to culture, pay attention to capabilities in these co countries you're, you're, you're going after. We make assumptions, and I, I'm, I speak for the U.S. We, we, we have a U.S.-centric mindset sometimes in how we design and build, um, and we're doing a lot of work to, to unlock us from that kind of thinking. Um, but totally, totally need representation of all types of, um, rep, you know, uh, elements that go in a project so that you do not exclude or you miss any, you know, important factor in it. Great. Uh, we are almost done with our formal questions. So we have two questions uh, in our comment. Mm -hmm. So let's take uh, one. Which is how does digital transformation helps uh, business enterprises to achieve sustainability? Love that. Yeah. So um, this is great. There's a lot of efforts going on right now around like how can we reduce carbon footprints and how can we um, turn these businesses and go like you know when when you go digital you are literally focused on reducing print and reducing places where you would kill trees to make things or create supply chain, you know, that are not needed. Um, I think you probably should start by setting yourself a goal. Like what is the sustainability goal you want to achieve through your business and grow it as you as you grow it, grow the business? Um, is it is it probably like we're going to cut, you know, um, a certain expense that is tied to a print, let's say? I'm, I'm using print as an example, given it's simpler. Um, and then grow from there, make it your focus. Like there's a lot of work done um, around, you know, data centers are everything these days, right? Given the cloud um, and the way we kind of use renewable energy to kind of power them is a focus, right? It's an area of massive attention because if we don't make that infrastructure sustainable, we're going to deplete the earth trying to talk to each other. Like that's going to be the reality. So I would say, um, Digital transformation absolutely should help you achieve sustainability, but make give yourself reasonable goals to start with on like what are the places where you think you have you have good indicators that if you if you transform something, it will improve your sustainability down the road and then keep evolving that goal and grow it. I'm about to graduate soon. What are the skills I should develop to cope up with the uh, for industrial revolution? With the with the what? Sorry, say that again. Uh, how I should develop to cope up with the four industrial revolution. Revolution. Okay. What are the skills mm -hmm. I should develop? I think I, I think we kind of talked about this earlier, like the having this open mindset and like focus on your abilities to problem solve creatively. Creative problem solving will continue to be a area that is, it's not a science and it's not an art and it's a mix of both and it comes with age sometimes. <laughs> like you have to give yourself time to kind of have, to, to have multiple experiences to, um, to learn from before you become like more savvy about it. At the same time, I think curiosity is massive. Like be curious, like you don't know wh what you will actually fall in love with and you, you'll have great you know, affinity to, to fix and improve. Um, I, I think sometimes the, um, we, we think like there's a list of skills and if I achieve those skills, I'm gonna like be able to do ABC. And it's true for some, sometimes, but then it will break later. Like you should always be thinking about like, I need to be curious about what's going on around me. I should be able to, um, to, to have a pulse on the industry that I'm interested in understand what capabilities exist today that could help me do something better. 
and then go where your heart takes you. Like, oh, if you feel excited about marketing, you get excited about technology, business. There's so many aspects of the transformation that you should absolutely pursue. But for, for me, if somebody is thinking about digital transformation and trying to write the list of skills underneath it, there's a massive technology skill set that's needed. And it can range from all things we talked about, from AI to security to all, all the things in between, data, let's say. And then there's like the ability to to impact change. This is an area that I feel it's untapped sometimes and there's not much um, you know, clarity about it and, and that's what makes it even more interesting. That to impact change, it means that when, when that solution gets built, somebody is gonna, help, gonna have to help to create the change in how people operate and how the business is running. So it has like so many meaty elements that are part tech, part business, part communication, part psychology, part inter, interpersonal relationships. Um, and then the third element I would say is um, upskilling others, like the ability that it's, it's a skill too to help others learn what you're learning and to bring them along and to show them what is the new skill now they need for their new job. So education is also transforming. And this is, you know, it, it's a skill to learn how to learn and to learn how to teach in this new environment. That's great. So there's another uh, technical question. So I mm -hmm. should ask you in a technical way uh, say for example uh, if one social media uh, say for example has lost uh, say for example like hundred uh, thousand of their uh, customer uh, subscribers so uh, if they want to regain uh, those active users uh, so is digital transformation is going to help them so we're saying there's a hundred user or maybe, maybe maybe a good number of user uh, left that uh, social oh, media left. platform okay and so there's a lot of questions to be asked here like what happened like what kind of what what triggered that change um so i don't i don't want to be like sounding as if the digital transformation is the magic that's going to solve all problems i think there's there's you know a root cause to probably what happened and that need to be dissected did we do that like did we did we study what was the the state up till that point how things started deteriorating why did we lose them what were like some factors whether internally externally um how are we doing as a as a group as a company what was the morale when people were starting to see this deterioration and then if we identify that there's part of it technology, part of it human, then yeah, it is a digital transformation project. That is probably what got us here, won't take us there. And it's time for us to rethink that, you know, the effort. Um, and it, when you say like there's a massive scale of people, like massive number of people that are dropping off, um, it could be so many things. But if 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 it, the obviously I cannot, you know, diagnose without asking tons of questions but it's it, it it seems to me like there's a problem with scale like it, it hit a certain scale and then the capabilities or the services we offered did not serve at a this larger scale so what did we were well, probably more successful at the medium size but once we hit that larger size things started changing this is probably where you need to kind of focus and understanding the root causes there I'm not offering a solution, obviously, because I need to, to answer, you know, ask a lot more questions, but that's just from hearing the question is where I'm going. Great. Please play. Um, um, yeah, oh, yeah, please continue. No, no, please continue. Just one minute. No, no, I just um, trying to invite you. That's why, please continue. <laughs> Hello, Mahubia. Are you there? <laughs> I have no questions yet, so you can ask her. <laughs> I think you're on mute, though. Thank you so much. Uh, we are at the end of our session. So, and, you know, like, uh, almost, like, there are very few expert uh, people here in Bangladesh right now uh, who can actually talk about you know, digital transformation. So we are lucky and we are one of the rare rare group of people i think that to learn uh some basic and uh, good uh information about you know like digital transformation and how it is going to change the landscape of business uh of tomorrow's mm -hmm. so and you know like guests like you always inspire us you know like uh, it is it, it uh this kind of thing is 
uh, changing the definition of volunteering. You know, like whether, whatever you are, whether wherever you are, and whoever you are, you can always contribute in any in, in any way. Like, say, for you are you have shared your experience, knowledge with us and with the audience of Bangladesh, and they're going to learn. And this this uh, session is going to be watched by so many people. They they are going to learn a lot of things. Maybe people a lot of new. Uh, this topic is new for a lot of mm -hmm. people. So this is an absolute honor for us to have you and to this kind of session and to learn something from you who is doing this kind of thing uh, and working for this kind of super advanced organization and we're learning from uh, you is absolutely amazing. And from the School of Entrepreneurship Development, I would like to thank you and I would like to show our gratitude towards you. Thank you both so much. I had such a great time talking to the both of you and I learned a lot too through the questions and the interactions. Um, best of luck to all of you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Have right. a good day. Bye bye. I'm really glad that you have spared a great portion of your valuable time to talk with us and enlighten our audience. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. All right. Have a great one, everybody.